Hello everyone, welcome to my tutorial on how to create an autumn forest using OSL and PFLOW in 3ds Max. For today's tutorial, you'll need a tree model. If you don't have one, you can use the one I got. It's on TurboSquid for free and it was, it was created by XFROG. In terms of what the look I'm going for, um, I want my palette of colors to be from the orange to the yellow, so a little bit like in what we see in this photo. And for the leaves themselves, um, I want them to have a ramp. So as you can see in this uh, photo, it goes from a, a yellow to an orange. And notice the veins of the leaves as well. It's sort of a dark line sitting on top of the color, so we're going to get that look as well. You can see the veins really nicely in this photo. So let's get started. Inside of Max, select your leaf model. Go to Elements and separate your leaves into material IDs. Each material ID is going to be a leaf color. So depending on how many colors of leaves you have in your tree, you're going to want to make the same number of material IDs. Next, in the Material Editor, create a physical material, assign it to the leaves, and set your glossiness to 0, 0 0.2. Turn Thin Walled On and set Translucency to 0.2. Next, bring in an OSL bitmap lookup and get your leaf texture. The bitmap lookup has all the channels separated, so grab the alpha channel, plug it into the cutout of the physical material. Next, look for an OSL simple gradient and eliminate all the layers you don't need. Since I have two colors per leaf, I only need two layers. Set the B position to 1 to have a smooth gradient between the colors. Now I'm going to go th and pick my colors, which I've pre-made, and set in the color floater window. I have three different color leaves in my tree, so I'm going to duplicate my gradient two more times. Now I'm just going to go and pick the colors I've pre-made already for my other two leaves. So in today's example, I'm going to show you how to create your leaf texture three different ways. The first thing you need to do is create a one of n color switcher and a UVW transform. Set the rotation to minus 90. This makes sure that the gradient flows in a vertical direction. Connect the UVW to the input of each gradient. The first method of creating our leaf color is to simply plug in the simple gradient color directly into the one of n. This will give the color of the texture, sorry, the color of the leaf, but your leaf won't actually have any veins on it. It'll just be a cutout of the color. The second method, we're going to use a composite map, an OSL composite map. So what we'll do is plug in the color of the leaf to the top layer RGB and then our simple gradient into the bottom layer GB. Excuse me. Compo the simple gradient into the top and the leaf texture to, this, to the bottom. Next, set the composite to a color dodge. I'm going to render out the map a little bigger so we can see what the result is. It looks really good. But I find it a tiny bit desaturated. So I'm going to color, I'm going to create a color correction map. Plug it in. And I'm going to set the saturation to 0.2. Let's render again and see what it gives. Excellent. For the third method under math color, create a smooth step and a subtract color. Plug in the leaf color texture to the input of smooth step and set the low to somewhere around 1.4 and set the high to somewhere around 3.8. Let's render out to see what we get. Next, plug the out to B of the subtract 
and then your gradient to the A of the subtract. Let's render out to see what we get. Super. Next, let's plug it in. Plug in the second gradient to the second input and the first gradient to the first input. Next step is to create a material ID node. Under scene attributes, material ID, plug in the index to index. Plug in the one of n to the base color and then to the subsurface color. And with that, we finish setting up our first tree. Let's get a render and see our result. As you can see in the render, the one of n switcher is assigning each leaf color we made to the material ID of the leaves we defined at the beginning of the tutorial. The next step for our setting up our forest shader is to repeat what we just did for a second tree with new colors. Next, duplicate the maps used for the first tree and replace the colors with new leaf colors that the second tree will use. The way the forest shader works is that every tree in the forest will use colors that fall somewhere within the range of colors between tree number one and tree number two. Now, let's change the composite node from color dodge to linear dodge. Let's take a render and see our results. And let's do the same for the smooth step. Okay, super. So that takes care of our second tree shader. As you can see, it uses a common material ID node. Now let's plug in the second tree one of N to the base color and then to the subsurface color as well. Let's render it out and see what we get. Okay, great. So this will be our second tree. As I mentioned earlier, the forest will be made up of trees ranging in colors from the first yellowish tree we made to this red and orange one. So let's set the shaders aside for now and take a look at how to set up our particles to create a forest. I'm going to hide my plane, switch to my final camera, and unhide my terrain. As you can see, I've already painted some particles onto my terrain. Each particle in this scene is going to be a tree in my forest. Next, Press 6 to open the pflow graph editor. Create a standard flow and replace the birth with a birth paint. Click none and choose your particle paint. For a placement, you can use placement paint. Oh, and one thing I almost forgot Emit stop also has to be at zero. Return to the placement paint, click none, and also pick particle paint. Speed you will not need, so you can delete. Rotation, randomize horizontal. And for the shape, you want to replace that with the Arnold shape. Click it. Find your models in the Explorer, click None, and choose one of the models. And now last, we need a scale. I want my scales to be at 250%, with a variation of 50% in X and Y, and 75Z. Now since we have four models in our tree, I'm going to create the same event four times. Make the Arnold shape unique and then select the second model in the group. Let's do it two more times. And finally, Attach the events back up to the source to finish setting up our forest particles. Let's go back into the material editor and finish up our shader so that all the trees in the forest will have the different colors we set up. Create a named attribute map. Type in PAID for particle ID and make sure to check off 
user defined property. Next, return to math color and create an OL cell random by index color map. Connect the integer to index and in your first tree to the min and in your second tree to the max. Connect the random by index map to the base color and then also to the subsurface color. And that's it. The shader is now complete. The particles are now set up. All, all that's left to do is to set up your camera and press render and wait for the result. And here we have the final render. As you can see, our forest trees have ranging colors from the yellow tree number one all the way to our reddish tree number two. And every tree has a variation of the three leaf colors we defined. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something that you can use in your own work. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.